Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Niharika Jha, and I'm going to start a new series of case discussion on the YouTube platform, on the YouTube channel of Derma Coaching. In this particular series, I will be discussing about the various uh, cases which I have encountered in my practice during my normal OPT days, and how did I approach towards that particular case. This particular series has been started to benefit the postgraduate students of dermatology and to create their interest in the subject of dermatology so that they develop a knack how to differentiate between the various conditions or the various differential diagnosis associated with one particular disease. I would like to tell you one thing that I'm not going to discuss the treatment part of it on this particular platform because I do not want to support quackery. In this series, the first case discussion will be on the topic of dermatitis herpetic forms. So let's get started. A 23 year old male presented to the OPD with complaints of severe itching on body on and off for the past eight to nine months. He noted that there were periods of remissions and aggravations and no dynal variation was noted by the patient. No aggravating factors were noted by the patient. He did not understand when the disease got aggravated, are there any particular reason for the aggravation of the disease? But he did notice that after applying some topical medications which were prescribed to him by a physician, he got relief for a short period of time only for the disease to recover. So the period of relief or the remission was very brief. He gave a very important history of abdominal discomfort. And when I asked the patient what does he mean by the term of abdominal discomfort, he said that there were frequent episodes of constipation, diarrhea, and bloating. Patient has previously taken treatment for GERD as well. Be good. When I examined the patient, I found that the patient had a multiple group exfoliated papules, particularly over the upper back, the elbow region, the knees, and the upper natal cleft. I also noted mild thrusting. So these are the pictures of the patient. You can see that multiple group pap exfoliated papules, these are present over the elbow region, the knee region, and they were also present near the natal cleft. You can also see mild amount of thrusting in some of these pictures. So thrusting means that some amount of ocean or blister formation in this particular case would have happened uh, because of which thrusting is there. Palms and soles were not involved, scales, uh, scalp was not involved in this patient, and no oral deposit involvement was seen in this particular patient. So till now, what is the important positive history? History of aging, periods of aggravation, periods of remissions. And he gave a very important history of abdominal discomfort. And on examination, multiple group exfoliated papules present over upper back, elbow, shoulders, the knee area, and the middle cleft. Some amount of crafting was also noted. So when all this positive history was there, I was able to, you know, make certain differential diagnosis in my mind. It, in the top of the list was dermatitis herpetiformis, then regular simplex, cabies, and papillary urticaria. Now, what are the points in favor of dermatitis herpetiformis? In dermatitis herpetiformis, intensely pruritic lesions are seen. Here also the patient comes in of intensely pruritus. In dermatitis herpetiformis, we see group vesicular uh, papules. It can be pleomorphic, they can be urticaria, exfoliated papules, they can be just mild thrusting, which can be noted over these areas. So we did notice group exfoliated papules on these particular areas. The sites were very typical, the upper back, the elbow, the knees, and the natal cleft. These sites are very typical of dermatitis herpetiformis. Also, the patient gave a very important history of abdominal discomfort, which is associated with dermatitis herpetiformis. Then the next in the list is pruritus simplex. Pruritus simplex is again an itchy condition, but it is not associated with abdominal problem. Scabies. Now, in scabies, mostly apart from the exfoliated papules, none of the history or examination were in favor of this particular disease. Why? Because there was no nocturnal itching, there was no diurnal variation. The patient did not give any positive family history. No, nobody else in this family had a history of itching, particularly if he has been having itching for the past eight to nine months. Also, uh, when I examined uh, this particular patient, only these sites were involved, the periumbilical area, 
the axillary area, uh, the web faces, the shoulder area, thighs, they were not involved. So the Hebra circle, if we want to examine the Hebra circle, most of the parts of the Hebra circle was not involved. Then papillary aortic area. Papillary aortic area is usually seen over the exposed parts of the uh, patient's body, which are not covered by the clothing. But in this particular case, both exposed and unexposed parts were there. It is an aging condition, but it is not intensely to direct. This particular patient was in uh, distress. He was very upset with the itching that was not subsiding even after taking medication. So to confirm my primary diagnosis, the main diagnosis, which was dermatitis herpetiformis, I decided to do a biopsy for histopathological examination and DIF. Apart from the normal routine blood investigation and urine examination, so I got CBC, LFT, KFT, urine routine, and also uh, I got um, GCPD done in this particular patient. But my main focus was on histopathological examination and DIF. So histopathological examination, the biopsy showed moderate, dense, superficial, and deep perivascular or peri-epidural infiltrate, which were of lymphocytes and eosinophils. Several eosinophils were seen in the reticular dermis, and the papillary dermis shows edema. So we know that in dermatitis operative form, there's a cleft which is seen, and neutrophils and eosinophils together, they form microabscesses. So might be I took uh, the uh, biopsy from an early lesion in which the features might not have developed. And whenever we are taking biopsy in the case of suspected case of dermatitis operative form, even for DIF or uh, HPE, we should take the biopsy from the neighboring skin. No, rather than taking the biopsy from the lesion itself. DIF it should be always taken from the neighboring skin. Okay, even for a histopathological examination, the biopsy should be taken from the perilesional area. Might be the area which I chose in that area, the features were still developing. So the feature looked more like prodigy something because no microabscesses were seen and no cleft was seen. So this is how his histopathological examination looks like. Okay, so uh, you can see that this is the epidermis, this is the dermal papilla, and in this particular area, there is a lot of infiltrate, but neutrophils were not uh, seen by the expansion. It is not very clear, but mostly I can see lymphocytes and yes, multiple eosinophils are there. So eosinophils they have spectacle shape nucleus. So yes, but a lot of edema, you can see that there are, these are empty spaces, so these are edema. So that means the left would have been still formed. So uh, we got a report of prorigo simplex. But on immunofluorescence, what did we get? So in immunofluorescence, we got IgA deposition and not in some small amount, three plus positive granular IgA deposition in the papillary dermis, which clearly proved that this was a case of dermatitis herpetiformis. So even though if the, the histopathological report was not suggestive of DH, the DIF report definitely was. Because I didn't take, or I didn't choose the right area to take the biopsy. Okay. So this is how his uh, DIF looked like. So granular IgA deposition was seen in the papillary dermis. So that is how I did for this particular diagnosis. And I gave the treatment according to a DH, the patient is under control. But one thing I would like to add is that for DH, the main thing is the diet restriction. So if we do the proper diet restriction, if we don't uh, tell the patient about diet restriction, that is our fault. We have to tell them about the particular food products they're supposed to avoid because it has been seen that if those particular diet restrictions are followed for a long period of time, then gradually this particular granular deposit, they get cleared off. This is how I reach to the diagnosis of DH. Very quickly, we will go through about what is DH. So it is a rare disease, it is in density pruritus, and it is usually characterized by recurrent papillovesicular disorder. It is also known as Jarring Rock disease. 
In this case, the eruption is symmetrical and geomorphic. And what are the different types of lesions that can be seen? They can be erythromatous, urticarial, papillar, vesicular, or even sometimes bullet lesions uh, lesion can be seen. Underlying gluten sensitivity is present, but it can be asymptomatic. And DH can be seen in any age, but it is usually seen in the age group of 20 to 55 years of age. In this particular case, this particular male was around 23 years old. Then pruritus, erythromatous papules, urticarial veins, excoriated papules, small blisters. This is how uh, DH can present. The vesicles are very difficult to demonstrate because they are very superficial and they get ruptured very easily. As a result, we can see some crusting, but it's difficult to find an entire blister. Grouped together, they, these lesions are grouped together on plaques of erythema, and it can be associated with eczematous and lichenoid changes. The common sites have already talked about it. Oral lesions might be present, but again, they can be asymptomatic because the blisters are very superficial. If we talk about histopathological examination, microabscesses made up of neutrophil and neutrophil, they are uh, formed in the dermal papilla, and biopsy it should be taken from the vicinity of the blisters. For DIF, again, from the neighboring normal skin, we should take the biopsy. And what do we see in DIF? Granular IgA deposition in dermal papilla. IgA granular deposition in the papillary dermis is seen when yet slowly removed if gluten is removed from the diet. So what kind of diet we like for this particular patient? They have to avoid bro products. B-R-O-W, bro products. The B stands for barley, R stands for rye, O stands for oats, and W stands for wheat. Apart from the normal treatment that we are supposed to give to these particular patients. Now, because we live in North India, I'm particularly from Delhi, wheat is a very important staple diet. And our responsibility does not end just by saying that avoid wheat, because that is what we consume on a daily basis. We are having chapatis for anti food. So we need to give them alternatives that what can be used instead of wheat. So maize or uh, card as we call it. So maize wheat or uh, maize flour is actually good for them. Most of my patients actually of dermatitis herpetic formis, he went for a tour to South India along with his family and he himself earlier when I used to tell him that uh, you need to avoid these products but it was difficult, it will be difficult for any person who for whom wheat is a staple diet but when he went to South India and for almost around two weeks he was having idli, dosa, vada and all and um, he himself noted that I feel much more relieved of the disease now even when I was taking all the medications and now with the medication when I am following the diet restrictions as well I feel much better now. So just by saying that you should not be having wheat that is not enough. You need to tell them the alternatives and these are the few alternatives they can offer. They can uh, offer um, uh, rice if they can eat rice and uh, for flour they can use maize flour they can use ragi a diet restriction will take them a long way, uh, long way. for a detailed class on dermatitis herpetiformis or immunobullet disorders please purchase your lecture from derma coaching i'm sure you will be benefited by them and i really hope that you found this class to be really useful please mention in the comment section what other cases you wanted to discuss Thank you and take care. Bye.